Thank you, ma'am. If we could call to order the council meeting of March 25th, and if the clerk would please read the roll. All right, I just have it. Council Member Dunbar. She left. Council Member Garza. He's ill. Council Member Hussein. Here. Council Member Jackson. Present. Council Member Spadafort. Council Member Spitzley. Here. Council Member Washington. Here. Council Member Wood. Here. There are six members present at quorum. Council Members Dunbar and Garza are absent. At uh, this time, if we could uh, rise uh, for a moment of meditation and uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, and do we have any? Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. I just, um, you know, I just wanted to um, ask people to remember Dr. Marcy Street. She died unexpectedly um, over the weekend, um, a, a great businesswoman, a pioneer in her field, and, um, you know, the world's just a little bit sadder today um, on her loss. So if we can just remember her in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, we don't have that. <clears throat> and we are to uh, consideration of late items. Vice President uh, Spadafore. Madam President, I move the suspension of Council Rule Number 9 in order to consider a late item. And so we have a motion on a late item, and that late item will be introduction of an ordinance. So all those in favor of um, approval of a late item say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And we will take that up at the appropriate time. And we are to comments by council members and the city clerk. Do we have any council member comments? Council member Washington. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I want to remind everybody, and everybody is welcome, it's not just First Ward residents, but that I'll be having my constituent meeting April 6th, 10 a.m. to noon, at the Rio Town Board of Water and Light Depot. That's on South Washington, just north of Mount Hope Avenue. If you can't make it there by 10, and or you can't stay till noon, come anyway. It's really relaxed, come for whatever amount of time you can make it. This will be your last opportunity to hear from the Katz Ferguson um, development team with any last minute questions regarding the Brownfield and or their development um, because we will be voting on the Brownfield April 8th. We will also be having um, members representing the school board, the Lansing School Board, to talk about the special election on May 5th? 7th. May 7th, regarding um, millage for the sinking fund. And they will be um, there to answer any questions and to give a brief presentation on what this millage will go for. Also, I can't believe I left my um, paper in my office. I do want to mention that the Allen Neighborhood Center now has meals to go, and you can get the menu and the forms at kitchen at allenneighborhoodcenter.com, I believe. I'll, I'll clarify that better. But this is a really cool program. What they have is they have an incubator kitchen there, and they also they have people that are starting restaurants, uh, food service. And they have uh, terrific, it's a Ethiopian grain, it's gluten-free, and they make the most wonderful Ethiopian food. They have meal bubble, they've got Hobie's um, catering. But anyway, the gist of it, and I'm going to announce this again the next time we get together, but you can put in your order on Tuesday, you pay for it through PayPal, it's like $13. There's a different menu every week. The menus are loaded up on Friday, so you know what it is. A different vendor, different menu every week, they rotate out. And um, then you just pick it up on Thursday between four and six. It's a really good way to help these um, young businesses thrive. 
and you have to eat anyway, and it's really good and healthy food. So with that, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Councilmember Hussein. I just want to express my gratitude to a number of individuals that came out uh, this past Saturday. Uh, we engaged in a South Waverly uh, kind of community cleanup, uh, and there was a need that was identified, so I want to first thank uh, Kathy Toby of Churchill Downs. Uh, in terms of that, that corridor and in terms of the trash that was strewn about, uh, that was actually kind of, you know, unearthed when, when uh, the uh, snow melted. Uh, but in short order, we wanted to make sure that we got it done very, very quickly. Uh, so in short order, we worked with um, our, some of the respective neighborhoods in the area, Churchill Downs, uh, Averwood's neighborhood, uh, Lansing Eaton neighborhood organization, to bring together what was really um, a healthy number of volunteers uh, this past Saturday. And we were able to, um, it combined, we had about 25 volunteers, but we were able to pick up about 25 large bags of trash. So that's 25 large bags of trash that uh, aren't strewn across the corridor, and that matters to residents, that matters to business owners. And so we really appreciate the folks that uh, kind of helped us put together this effort. Uh, I wanted to, to thank Kathy Toby, obviously, for identifying a need and, and really advocating for a resolution. Uh, Mike Redding of Churchill Downs, Jason Wilkes of Averwood's uh, Neighborhood, and, uh, and Nathan Hartley of Leno, uh, who all kind of came together and, and really reached out to their respective neighborhoods uh, to bring together uh, those, those volunteers this past Saturday. I also want to thank uh, Andrew Kilpatrick uh, and Nathan Arnold from Public Services, as well as Andrea Crawford from the Neighborhoods and Citizens Engagement Department. <laughs> for throwing us quite a few assists. Again, this was very, very short notice. I think we put this entire thing together in about three days, uh, and it wouldn't have been possible without those individuals. So I just wanted to say thanks. Thank you. Are there any other council comments? Seeing none. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, President Wood. Uh, a couple of announcements that I want to make. Um, we have issued our first electric scooter license approval, so uh, those will be hitting the streets, I think, later uh, this week even. Um, so we have had one company apply so far, uh, complying with our new regulation, and we're ready to approve them. Um, and uh, also, I want to make a couple of notes about the May 7th special election. Uh, the ballots, for those of you who have already requested an absentee ballot, will be going in the mail this Friday. Uh, and we have over 4,000 ballots that will be going in the mail um, this Friday. Um, people can still request absentee ballots up until actually uh, right before Election Day. And um, we will have them, if you want to pick up an absentee ballot in person, we will have the ballots in our offices uh, by this Thursday. So you can walk in, get an absentee ballot, vote it and walk out or take it with you, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, so we will be um, <clears throat> Working on that election, uh, again, the election day is May 7th. It's our first election with the new no reason absentee voting, uh, as well as the same day registration. So if you're not registered, I encourage you to get registered, but you can register all the way up until election day. Um, and then uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we are just about a month away from the filing deadline for uh, the city council elections that are up this year. We have two at large seats and uh, the first and third ward are up for election this year, so uh, you can contact my office at 483-4131 if you're uh, looking at running for one of those. Uh, we do have a list of the candidates that have either pulled paperwork or filed paperwork available on our website at lansingmi.gov slash clerk. And with that, we are to community event announcements. If anyone has any community events that you want to announce, please come forward with your silver ladle or <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you president wood council members mayor um, we had a great event on saturday at the east side neighborhood organization super um, i want to thank everybody who came out um, you crew were great once again and we got a lot of uh, donations and um, i'm here tonight to present the uh, silver ladle. Um, Council Member Spitzley, I have your raffle item <laughs> here. Um, we had, um, let's see, Judge Clark came in third, Judge Ward came in second, and Council Member Washington came in first. <laughs> so, thank you very much. <laughs> may I? present it to you may go down and 
select your award. Peter Spadafore said that you guys gave it to me so I'd quit whining. <laughs> <laughs> I stand behind that statement. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Are there, <coughs> excuse me, are there any <coughs> other community announcements? Yes. Hi, thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, Teresa Lark, Mid Michigan Environmental Action Council. We work with um, the Ingham County Health Department, Eaton County Health, Clinton County Health, uh, City of Lansing, Board of Water, and I'd like to put on this event, Recycle Rama. April 13th, we are looking for volunteers. Um, Bitly at uh, RecycleRama. Oh, I'm sorry, RecycleRama 2019. I think I've sent this to all of you. I think you have it, but if not, I can I leave it with somebody and maybe they can distribute it to you. So yeah, April 13th, it's a community-wide event for uh, Greater Lansing. A again, the three health departments are involved. So bring your stuff you don't want. Thank you. Any other community events? Loretta Stanaway for the Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries and for the first time this year we will be hosting a doggy Easter parade costume contest in Mount Hope Cemetery in the Fratcher Memorial Garden on Sunday April 28th at 3 p.m. We'll be opening registration online on our Facebook page for the Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries within this next several days. We have three celebrity judges lined up. We have first, second, and third prizes, lots of goodies, lots of giveaways. But most important, the purpose of this is to raise money to buy um, in-ground flat markers for the 60 boys in the boys' training school site at Mount Hope Cemetery that have been buried there since at least, uh, I think the latest one was in 1950s. And these are unmarked graves to date. Uh, one of the boys out of the 61 has a marker, the rest do not. So we want to raise the money to buy markers for all these graves for these juveniles that were incarcerated or turned over by their parents to the state for uh, their safekeeping and their education and so forth. So again, it's uh, Sunday, uh, April 28th at 3 p.m. Mount Hope Cemetery and you register online through Eventbrite at the Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, any other community events? All right, <coughs> seeing none, we are to um, speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. If you want to address city council, you'll have up to three minutes, but uh, it is required that you sign in, uh, and that would be on topics at this point on the blue sign-in sheet. Uh, for the scheduled public hearings, the items listed uh, under the consent agenda, uh, resolutions for action, ordinances for introduction, and ordinances for passage, and that does include the um, late ordinance for introduction that relates to uh, uh, the employee retirement system ordinance. Uh, so that'll be picked up in a few seconds, so if you wish to speak, uh, make, sh make sure you jump up and get signed in, and uh, we are to the mayor's comments. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first community events, uh, we have the, the Love Lansing celebration is gonna be on May 14th. Um, that's where we recognize the hard work of neighborhood leaders and neighborhood watch captains and coordinators, but I tell you that now because the nominations are due by April 1st. So. Uh, anybody who wants to nominate a hardworking neighborhood leader, please complete the brief nomination form. Um, they are on the city website or in the city hall lobby downstairs. Um, and second, the March neighborhood roundtables will be held this Thursday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 8 a.m. at the Foster Community Center. The Parks and Recreation Capital Improvement Plan will be discussed. So uh, all are welcome to come and ask questions or provide input or um, just listen. Um, second, I will, uh, you all have a, a huge binder in front of you. Uh, so that's the second budget that I am presenting to, uh, to city council and to the public. Uh, the, the president asked me to, to give the budget message during these comments, which I learned last year, so I appreciate that. It's year two, so I'm learning a little bit. But, um, but we're really proud of our, 
of the budget. Um, we, we worked really hard uh, to, to look at the revenues that, that were coming in and to right size priorities and align those priorities with, um, with the funds that we have. Uh, this year, we had mentioned it last year, and this year um, we are kind of in the, the first beginning phase of, of getting to a priority-based budget. The first stage of that is offering a program-based budget. So as council members and members of the public open their books in the beginning, there's a, a list of, um, it says programmatic budget, and then there's a list of programs, and there are dollars associated with each of those programs broken out by area. Um, we, uh, we work with a consultant um, to take the budgets that we have, you know, the traditional budget just as, as FTEs and, and you know, employees and how those dollars are broken out. And that traditional budget is the rest of the book, so you're still getting what you've always gotten. But you're also getting a list of, of all of the, the programs that the city of Lansing um, does and uh, where it is and who does it and how much it costs. And um, I say that because this is the first year we're doing this, and then as we go to next year, we'll be comparing and contrasting programs against each other to see um, what's, you know, what we can try and combine between departments, if there's anything duplicative, what uh, needs to be made priority. So we're, we're going to continue that process over the next year, and next year when we introduce uh, our budget, it will be a priority, a true priority-based budget. So this year it's program-based, next year it will be a true priority-based budget. Um, so we'll continue uh, down the field on that, but this year you get a little bit more information than you have before, uh, council members to consider and the public to review. So we're proud that we were able to, um, to create a program-based budget and look at the programs and who is, who's doing what. Um, in terms of the highlights of the budget, um, well, even before I get with that, I want to remind everybody that many of the, the recommendations are coming after we spent um, eight uh, participatory budget sessions throughout the city. We were in each ward, and um, first we had four general sessions, and then we had four more issue-specific sessions, and um, we had a lot of really good input. We had a lot, a lot of really good input. In the beginning, we had Legos, and people had to build their own budget, and that was um, an interesting experience. Uh, and then after that, we had a lot of good comment and commentary on uh, individual priorities for folks. So the budget this year uh, is $226.4 million. It's a 2.8% increase from the uh, last year's adopted budget. And then the proposed general fund budget for fiscal year 2020 is $139.5 million, which is a 3.9% increase from, the, uh, from last year's budget. Um, I'm just going to go through my, I'm not going to give you the whole thing. I'm just going to give you kind of some highlights. Um, we, uh, we made some, uh, some improvements in public safety. Uh, we are recommending to council and the public an addition of one more community policing officer. So we have 10 community policing areas now, and I'm going to recommend adding one more police officer and one more community policing um, territory. So we'll go from 10 to 11. Um, parking enforcement uh, is going to move from police department to economic development. So that move will actually free up a half sergeant's time that was previously devoted to parking enforcement oversight. Uh, we're reinstating the Lansing, the, uh, the LPD's uh, PAL, Police Athletic League program, um, to a, a small percentage uh, for some of the activities that, that they want to do with our kids. Uh, and we're also adding a graduate level crime analyst internship pro uh, program in conjunction with Michigan State University for, uh, to, for crime analysis. Uh, the budget for public safety also includes uh, a dollar, dollars for equipment and infrastructure for both our, our police and fire, which includes co-locating the city's special operations unit and the Tri-County Metro unit and the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency all in one unit. Um, we're purchasing new fire protection turnout gear, which is tremendously important for our firefighters. Uh, we're replacing the fire records management system we are purchasing fire department laptops and tablets, um, and we're getting police some new computers that they need uh, for their cars. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, we, um, we held our, our, our roadmap neighborhood tours, so anybody who's interested in the future um, road work that's going to happen, uh, that is all online in our roadmap plan. Um, we have 
about $300 million in road needs. We do not have $300 million uh, in funding coming from the state or feds or our millage. Um, so we make do with what we have. We will have $4.5 million for major street and bridge work, which is a $2.5 million increase from last year. Um, we have $2.8 million for local street repairs, which is a $300,000 increase from last year. We will have $500,000 for new sidewalks and trailways. We'll have $300,000 for sidewalk repairs, which matches the amount that we, um, we created last year, which was an increase last year. Uh, and like last year's budget, 100% of the city's uh, road and sidewalk millage is going to be used for all road projects. Um, we're gonna include $50,000 to implement uh, wireless access capabilities in five of our city parks. Um, people don't actually know, but uh, one of our parks, Adato Park, uh, has free Wi-Fi now, and we're gonna add five more parks, and we're gonna spread them throughout the city, one for each ward, so none of the ward council members, um, I don't wanna hear any complaints, because we're gonna try and give one per ward, because I, you know, I know the way that works. But um, realistically, it's not about that, it's about access to our residents. Um, so we wanna make sure that all of our residents have an opportunity to, to bring their kids there, and to have Wi-Fi, and let their kids play, and be able to get things done. Um, so that's really important. We're gonna continue the, uh, the combined sanitary, sanitary and stormwater sewer separations. Uh, we're putting $930,000 designated for the next segment, which is gonna be in Colonial Village. Um, so you know, while there'll be big trucks and it can be a pain in the neck, those folks all get new roads. So I ran into a woman in Rite Aid who lives in Morris Park two weeks ago, and she was on and on about how excited she was for the new roads, and she didn't even care that the road was closed for a few weeks because she got her new roads. Colonial Village is next on the list. Um, and in our effort to replace our aging vehicle fleet, uh, this year's budget includes $1.9 million in vehicle and equipment purchases and replacements. Uh, and along with that, I wanna mention that, um, uh, as we all know, we sold a parking ramp. So I will be coming to you in the next week or two with uh, um, an appropriation, a supplemental appropriation for the ramp sale, which will contain more um, equipment uh, and, and IT and technology upgrades, uh, amongst other things that, we're, that we desperately need for this city. So we're gonna take that opportunity to, um, to fix what needs to be fixed, um, and that will come to you probably, I think, in the next week or two. We're, we're, now that this budget is done, we need to finalize those details. Um, for our neighborhoods and economic development, we, um, we're adding uh, one code compliance officer uh, for rental inspections, mostly. Uh, and that'll bring the number of code compliance officer positions to 10, in addition to our five code compliance premise officers. Um, so the 10 rental um, and the five premise. Um, what else? Uh, last year, we, we increased the facade grant program um, to $150,000. This year, we're gonna add it, we're gonna increase it again, not tenfold this time, my apologies, but we'll increase it by another 25,000. That has been a tremendously successful program. We're seeing facade improved all over the city and we've got quite a bit more coming in the next few months as the weather gets warmer. So we're gonna increase that to $175,000. Um, our planning and zoning division is gonna see uh, some increases. We're adding an additional planning and zoning position uh, proposed in this budget. Clearly, we have all seen the additional work that's going on um, in our planning and zoning department and their needs, so we're proposing an additional officer there. We're also likely to see some um, retirements there, so we may have some restructuring, but we're still working on that. Um, and finally, uh, uh, with the establishment of the, um, of the Lansing Ignite, the new professional soccer team in Lansing, uh, we have put aside some dollars. Uh, we know when we had that conversation here that the field is going to deteriorate faster, so we're gonna start to put aside some money, we're proposing $25,000 towards future turf replacement so we can put aside some each year and be ready to, to, um, to fix that turf as we need, and that satisfies the contract. Um, we'll also mention, because uh, this all comes through the LEPFA budget, that we are decreasing the uh, Common Ground and Silver Bells appropriation by $83,000 um, while still supporting those important events. Uh, additionally, um, LEPFA's success in operating our, our Grosbeck golf course has re resulted in reduced parks millage funding, which is freed up for parks equipment and infrastructure within the millage, and, uh, and we're not proposing anything for the city market this year. So all of that is, is a reduction in the, the subsidy for 
LEPFA. Um, and finally, uh, for those who were there this afternoon, you already, you already heard, but we are proposing in our budget to make Lansing the, the first city in the state of Michigan to be uh, purchasing 100% renewable energy from the Lansing Board of Water and Light. Uh, we're excited to be the first city that will be 100% uh, renewable energy used in our buildings, and, um, and that comes through the budget if you, uh, if you pass it. So those are the, the highlights of the budget, and I'm happy to take any questions about how we've presented or what we're presenting, and uh, look forward to your consideration. Thank you. Are there questions? Uh, Council Member Washington. I just have two. This one additional code compliance officer, is that in addition to the corridor yes. officer we don't have yet? Uh, we do have. We made an offer uh, recently, and the offer was accepted. Um, it was a lot more challenging to hire that officer than we thought it would be. Okay. But uh, we do have that officer. But yeah, so that will be the fifth. That's the fifth that was approved. Last year we added two. Right. We added one more to be ward by ward, then you guys added the fifth. This yeah. will be a, um, a rental. This is a, a code compliance as opposed to premise. For multifamily uh, or just for, yeah. for rental yep. anything? Yep. Yep. Okay, the second question I have is, I have not heard about the FHT in a very long time. Are they now defunct? No, they're still operating. Um, they're still operating. They've, they've had some recommendations. Then we did our, our cap, our, uh, our proposal to the state. They were involved with that. We had some commentary, but they're still operating. They're meeting soon. April, we think early. Okay, April, could, April, could you please make sure that we know about yeah, that? We, because we you, we've had, I've heard nothing. We can check the email. But we, we, they meet quarterly, and then their committees meet fairly often. And I know council members are on the email, so we can check to make sure that it's going out. But they meet at like 7.30 in the morning. Um, they meet at LCC. I'm not getting them, we'll so if sure you could you just make sure. Yeah, Thank we'll make you. LCC if you. Okay. Okay, well, when is it? The executive committee has to still confirm the date, but we will get it to you. It'll be in April, um, I think spring break, threw things uh, into a loop. But yeah, it's they meet quarterly, and they're, they're working on a whole variety of recommendations. I had a conversation with, I've had conversations with several members, so they're they're active. Because summer is always a challenge. Yep. Always a challenge. Yeah, and I know you weren't at the last one, so maybe, that, maybe something happened with the email, so we will check that. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councilmember Hussein. Yeah, so when it comes to public safety, right now we are budgeted for 203 sworn officers. So when we're talking about adding an additional CPO, does that mean that we'll be budgeted for 204 or will one position be reclassified? No, no. Uh, we're budgeting for another one now. We are 202. Is it 202? Yeah, okay. so we will, so be we will now be for 203. Okay. Um, and then the other question I have when we're talking about the 100% renewable energy sourcing uh, from the LBWL. Yep. What is the budget impact for 2020? Uh, general fund, it's $100,000. In total, it's about 280. Um, so some of that is water treatment plant and other enterprise funds. So in total, it's 280 a year, and then that will reduce every year by about 10,000. And these are estimates based on power usage, um, based on expected power usage. So for the general fund dollars, it'll be 100,000, and then for the total expenditure, including enterprise fund, it'll be 280. Okay. Okay. Are there other questions? Councilmember Jackson, then Councilmember Spadafore. Um, on that same note, is there going to be somebody that can let us know whether or not our city's initiative to be 100% renewable has any impact on the net emissions of Board of Water and Light and their portfolio? The Board of Water and Light can can tell you that. I mean, they've got <coughs> they've got an amount of renewable power that they can get a hold of through um, through wind, solar, and hydro, and um, and we'll be buying renewable power from them. Now there's a limit, so you know when they hit a certain amount, they won't be able to, to do any more until they can produce more. And I know that they are looking at every avenue. They've had contracts canceled and things like that for um, for uh, for the the big turbines. Um, and I know that they're looking at solar and other things, but we'll be purchasing that from them. Um, and there will be. They will continue to add to that portfolio. So any citizen can do it. We do it personally. We are in the Green Greenwise Power Initiative. Um, so any citizen can do that. But at this point, it's my belief that Lansing should lead by example for our city, and um, and we should be part of that program. And we will be the first city in the state. There are a lot of cities that are moving towards it over a number of years. We'll be the first ones to actually implement it July 1st when the new budget starts. Right. Councilmember Spadafore or Vice President Spadafore. I'm sorry. 
close to work. <laughs> Some people call me Peter. Um, the I just want to thank the mayor for getting this to us. Um, obviously, there's a lot in here, and we have to look at it very carefully over the next few months. But I appreciate the really strong investment in a lot of the things this body has identified as priorities, including code enforcement. We're having a lot of discussion about rentals and the, the problematic landlords in the city. So having a dedicated enforcement officer to rentals is going to be huge in uh, affecting quality of life in the city. And then finally, I was going to say this, but you, you stole it from me. I think it's very important we lead by example on renewables. The GreenWise plan has been around. We talked to our residents about uh, signing up and doing all that. But with the 187 sites that our city owned, getting their, their power from renewables is going to help impact the commitment this council's made through resolutions affirming our climate action plan and the work the IGR committee is doing. So really very much appreciate this. I'll look at it, and then I'll have some criticisms. But right now, I, <laughs> not right now I'm happy. Yeah, and I do, and I'll, I'll add, you know, this is this is kind of step three, right? So we've taken step one, which is the climate action plan. You all passed, you know, the year, you know, what, a few years ago, you passed that after the Paris Accords were stripped. Then you, re, you know, reinstituted it. Um, and we, we're putting together the consultant. Um, the city of Lansing is also looking at energy efficiency. We have a consultant on that's looking at energy efficiency and is going to recommend to us. And then we actually have to bid out the work and, and whatever, um, Whatever savings we get, you know, we'll pay for the work, so it won't cost us anything. But we will be a lot more energy efficient. Um, so step three for me is 100% um, renewable power usage. Um, so I'm excited about that. Yes, uh, Vice President Spath. The energy reduction work that you're doing is that um, performance contracting. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, yep. thank you. Any other questions? Uh, the one question I do have is, um, and I know I just we just got it, and I briefly scanned it. Um, the age um, aging in place um, incentive that was um, done, um, there was an implementation plan um, and recommendations that were supposed to have been uh, presented to the mayor's office at the end of um, Mayor Bonero's um, term. And so if we could find out where that is, aging in place, um, and that was done in conjunction with um, the AARP. Mm -hmm. okay. And there were a number of um, recommendations that uh, groups worked on, and we want to make sure that that's also um, something that if there's additional budget dollars or how that's going to be implemented, we'd like to make sure that we also understand that. Right. We actually we have that. Um, we worked on that when I came in. Um, we, we reviewed that. There were some adjustments that needed to be made. Um, I know I worked with Director Kilpatrick on that, so I will get with him. Okay. My understanding is we were ready to submit it uh, recently to the AARP because they, they take ours and they take all the other cities and they, they review them, work on them. So I don't know that it's been submitted yet. I'll, I'll follow up on that. I, I think it was supposed to also be presented to council. Yeah. We've not seen it. So okay. I don't know that. Uh, let me check and see the status. I, I know we were very close, so let me okay. see where we're at. I'll all get right, to that. Thank you. Um, and then, of course, the thing that we always talk about is our line item, um, which I know isn't available tonight, yeah. but as quickly as we can have that so our auditor can start working on that and some of us that like to drill down in those things. Yes, our finance director believes we will have it by Wednesday. Um, now, I know, I'll be honest with you all, I have like six, seven things, she probably doesn't even know this, like six, seven things that I've been holding off talking to her about until this was done. So she says she'll have it Wednesday, but I'm going to throw a bunch of things at her tomorrow. So I'm going to tell you by the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So sorry, Angie, wherever you are. Okay. All right. Thank you. you. Um, and can I just say, um, Angie Bennett worked really hard on this. And I would like to, to thank her for all her hard work. Um, you know, I, I get texts from her all weekend trying to make sure that things are OK. And, and uh, she worked. She's, she's a very hard worker, and, um, and her effort really should should be recognized because um, this document, especially with the programmatic piece that we have put in, um, has not been easy to put together. And uh, and um, and we work together very well, but uh, I may be a little more demanding than, um, than I would like to admit sometimes. So I do want to publicly thank uh, Angie Bennett for all her hard work. All right, thank you. And with that, that concludes, I believe, the mayor's comments. And so uh, right. we'll move on in our agenda.
We are to public comment on legislative matters, and as I indicated, that includes the consent agenda resolutions for action, ordinances for introduction, and ordinances for passage, and the following five public hearings. Number one, uh, payment in lieu of taxes for 517 North Walnut, the Walnut Apartments. Number two, payment in lieu of taxes for Ferris Manor at 516 West Saginaw Apartments. Uh, SL, number three, SLU two of 2018, residential use in the I Heavy Industrial District at 1609 North Larch. Number four, Z9 2018, a Parcel number, uh, rezoning from C residential to F commercial district, and number five, uh, in consideration of Brownfield plan number 72, Red Cedar development at 203 South Clippert. All right, with that, all of these are being um, uh, spoken to by uh, the development chair, which is Council Member Hussein. And we do have another number of public hearings, so I will try to be brief so that we can get to the purpose of the public hearings, which are. Uh, obviously to hear from the public. So when it comes to the first, uh, this is a uh, in consideration of a pilot, which is a payment in lieu of taxes. This is for the property at 517 North Walnut, uh, which is the Walnut um, apartments, uh, which in, consists of nine apartments. In any event, the Capital Area Housing Partnership uh, acquired this property from the Greater Lansing Housing Co uh, Coalition, sorry, in late December of 2019. The Greater Lansing Housing Coalition uh, actually went out of business. Uh, this particular property has an existing 30-year pilot of the 4% variety. Uh, that pilot is uh, due to expire 2034. Capital Area Housing Partnership, what they would like to do at this point is to apply for what is called a low-income housing tax credit or a LIHTC uh, for MISTA. There's a few things they want to do. Um, they, they do want to do some interior and exterior work. Um, there are some energy efficiency programs that there are energy efficiency projects that they're looking at. Uh, but most importantly, um, they want to be able to provide or continue to pro uh, provide for uh, project based vouchers, uh, which will allow support service clients uh, to continue to have um, rent subsidized or covered uh, so that they don't find themselves homeless. Uh, the reason for the ask is that MISTA uh, does ask for uh, at least a 15 year pilot. Uh, there are additional points that are awarded for uh, pilots of the 4% variety. Um, and so they need to extend essentially uh, the existing pilot so that they have this 15 year coverage um, that MISTA uh, prefers. Uh, the ordinance also would amend um, the sponsor name uh, from Greater Lansing, Greater Lansing Housing Coalition. Uh, to the Capital Area Housing Partnership. We will take a look at this uh, later for final action. We don't typically have uh, public hearings uh, and then subsequent final action, we typically refer it back to committee and bring it back. Um, the, there is an urgent need here, however. They do want to apply um, by the April 1st deadline. They have individuals, um, when we look at these project, uh, I'm sorry, these, uh, these support service vouchers, if you will, um, some of the, the clients that they actually have uh, on their property uh, are set to have their vouchers expire. I believe it's June 30th, uh, so there is an urgent need. Um, when it comes to the next Ferris Manor 516 West Saginaw Apartments, um, same backstory and, and same need uh, for, for the amendment. So, But the, a little bit different in that this is not a two-year extension, but rather this is a four-year extension, again, to uh, help them to achieve that 15-year period um, that MISTA prefers. Um, so again, this would be adding four years to the existing uh, pilot and changing the sponsorship uh, sponsor name sorry to capital area housing partnership the third public hearing that we have before us tonight is in consideration of SLU which is a special land use permit uh, for residential use in the I heavy industrial district this is for 1609 uh, North Larch Street this is um, an old electrical substation uh, that was owned and operated by the Board of Water and Light. It was constructed back in 1936. It's been vacant for uh, the past 10 years. Last year, both the Board of Commissioners and this council um, did uh, approve the sale of what the Board of Water and Light was calling surplus property at that time. Um, the property has been sold. It was sold for $70,000 to Drew LLC. Uh, they had originally planned, I believe, to move business offices into that space. Uh, they own three commercial buildings and one residential building um, in the city of Lansing. Uh, they essentially offer space for rent, and so they were going to move their business offices into this building. Uh, the project did not pan out. Numbers were difficult to make work. Uh, and so what they are looking at doing now is to construct four apartments. Uh, we did have the applicant on hand uh, at our February 25th council meeting. Uh, he described the apartments as being two-bedroom two uh, apartments or larger. I think rents were uh, anywhere from $700 to $1,500. Um, 
they also, I think it was Councilwoman Spitzley addressed a couple uh, issues she had. She had brought up the, um, the site on, I think Google Maps to be quite frank, and, and realized that there were some issues uh, with parking. Uh, this applicant uh, does own the adjacent um, property as well. They have space, I think, for up to nine parking spots. And there was a uh, environmental phase one and two assessment that was conducted on this property. Uh, they did have to abate some asbestos and things like that, but those things have been taken care of. Um, Planning Board did approve this um, on, I think it was January 22nd, and our zoning uh, administrator is also recommending approval. The fourth public hearing uh, that we have tonight is in consideration of Z9-2018. Uh, this is a rezone request from C Residential District to F Commercial District. Uh, the applicant in this case is Bryant Hill on behalf of Gilbert M. Hill Trust. Uh, this is a uh, parcel of land that is east of um, South MLK and West St. Joe. It is, it's an interesting property in that it is uh, surrounded on three sides by, I think it's F Commercial and E2 uh, Local Shopping District. We had uh, the zoning administrator into our development and planning committee, uh, and they were very candid in that they don't, they don't quite understand why this was ever zoned F Commercial. Uh, they think it was either a mapping error um, or at some point there was a, a rezone, um, but they could not uh, find records on that. Um, and then the last public hearing is in consideration of Brownfield Plan Number 72. This is for the Red Cedar development at 203 South Clippert. Uh, we have had a lot of conversation on not only the uh, development agreement, but obviously the Brownfield uh, agreement that uh, we are taking a look at tonight for public uh, hearing uh, consideration. Um, this deals with, and I'll just talk about the Brownfield. I, obviously, I'm not going to talk about the development agreement tonight. The Brownfield was approved by the uh, Lansing Brownfield Redevelopment Authority on February 22nd. It's based on a projected $250 million in capital investment. 196.2 million of that is for vertical construction. 54 million of that is for um, what we call public infrastructure to essentially make that property developable. Uh, that's down, I think, from a uh, high of 79 million at one point. Uh, the duration of the Brownfield plan is 32 years. Uh, the capture period uh, is, is capped at 30, which is actually the cap uh, set forth by the Michigan Brownfield Act. The total tax capture for eligible activities and investment owed on the financing, we talk a lot about the $54 million, but that number over a 30-year period is $123,450,000. Uh, the pass-through uh, in terms of the 30-year period uh, of new taxes to taxing jurisdictions is $8,932,000 and nearly $9 million uh, will pass through to the Lansing Brownfield Redevelopment Authority uh, as well as the Michigan Brownfield Redeve Redevelopment Fund. Um, there is no municipal bonding um, that is new to um, this, brown or I shouldn't say new to this brownfield, but uh, the development agreement that we passed uh, in July of 2018, um, that was new to that development agreement. Uh, so that is obviously reflected in this brownfield uh, plan. There will be $280,000 uh, in terms of an LBWL expense to remove an old water well um, an old raw water well, sorry about that. Um, they were planning on, Lance Board and water, water, water and Light, were, they were planning to abate this. Uh, the developer asked uh, if they could do that just a little bit early, uh, and, and they said absolutely, uh, if you can basically cost share. Uh, and so the developer will take care of 50% of that, and the, um, sorry, Lansing Border Water and Light will take care of the other 50%. Um, this will create hundreds of construction jobs over a four-year construction period, and in terms of the $54 million uh, of work that is, is basically going into making this land developable, uh, there is a prevailing wage agreement. With that being said, I am done. All right, with that, we will open it up to public comment. Okay, we have Loretta Stanaway and then Donald Horton. I'm going to reiterate some of what I said at the Committee of the Whole meeting, but I'm going to expand on it a little bit too. First, I think we do need to ask the question, how much profit is enough profit to make this project a go? I think it's a fair question and the public deserves an answer to that question. Second, I think we need to ask what percentage occupancy was proposed when they made these projections for what the revenue generated from this project would be for the hotel, for the student housing, for the uh, retail, and so forth. I've been told that on average, 60 to 65 percent occupancy is about typical. And I've also been told, whether it's correct or not, I don't know, that these projections were based on 95 percent occupancy. So I think we need to ask that question, get a good answer to it. 
And we need to realize, too, that they've acknowledged that this wouldn't be the first time they would come and it wouldn't be the last time they would come for a handout, so to speak, if they uh, add on in a later stage. If they develop the second phase of the student housing, they would be looking at another brownfield. Also, we have to recognize that when the 30 years is up, they're going to be coming at us and saying we need Oprah's now for 12 years because these are 30-year-old buildings and they're not any good anymore. Um, we need to find out for certain who or when or how the parkland would be cleaned up because I don't see anything in this development agreement or brownfield that specifies who cleans up the parkland. Is it the drain commission? Is it this project? Is it the public? Is it not going to get done at all? We did get an answer from the city attorney that the land could be uh, reconsigned or, or consigned out or sold or whatever you want to call it with the council's approval. So it's typical in these kinds of agreements that when a project gets to be seven to 10 years old, when all the brownfield credits have been used up to most extent, when uh, the tax write-offs and everything else have fallen into place, that then the developer turns around and sells. So we need to make sure we lock in something that protects us in that regard. And lastly, uh, one thing I didn't mention before was that with this revision that you have before you now, almost everything on the street side is hardscape. There's very little uh, amenity on the street at all. It's all in the back behind the buildings along the parking lots. And the question I have on the parking lots is this. Are they permeable? Are they impermeable? We're going to be looking at a big project from the drain commissioner that's supposed to uh, alleviate runoff. And if we're going to be creating a lot of new parking space that's not impermeable, we're compounding our problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Ron, Donald Horton and then Jeff Haynes. Uh, good evening. Uh, my comments are basically on the Red Cedar development as well. It's well known that the uh, state regulators in Lansing have said that the sewer, uh, sewer systems uh, uh, and drain off uh, is a major problem. Now, both of the, the Grand River and the Red Cedar River uh, run directly south, or that is, the Red Cedar Runner River runs directly south of the uh, Red Cedar complex. And I'm going to more and less ad lib here because this is more confusing. Um, and what's, bothered, what's concerning me is the raw sewage that is released into both the Grand River and the Red Cedar River. The Red Cedar River flows right in to the wetlands that are located directly behind the, um, the uh, complex. And that concerns me because the Department of Our, uh, DEQ has said that uh, there's been an incre increase of the E. coli um, virus or whatever it is uh, in that area. And that concerns me. One of the reasons that it concerns me is because I remember one time when I was down at the fish ladder, walking along with my wife, and all of a sudden I looked, and here's all this raw sewage, fecal material and all, pouring out of a drain that was, obvious, that was a temporary um, flow. And I brought it right straight to the mayor's office, and that was quite several years ago. But when I thought of this, I thought to myself, I said, you know, the question is, is <clears throat> while we're moving fast, and we keep seeing one amendment after another on this issue, okay, I've heard very, very little about the issue of contamination, drain off, sudden rain, snow, whatever, and all of a sudden we have a major flood and we have raw sewage pumping, okay, right into the complex, which could create some serious health uh, issues and environmental issues, especially with the Red Cedar uh, wetland area there where it seems to me that the wetland would act as a sponge for collecting all of this. How are we going to clean all that up? Um, and I'm going to leave, that, uh, leave it at that. But this is an area that's starting to concern me because I've seen very little uh, discussion with relationship to this. So um, it's just a matter that I think that should have some heads up because I think that down the road it's going to become an issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, we have Jeff Haynes and then Matt Martin. Jeff Haynes. Matt Martin. Uh, 
Hello. Uh, I'm here uh, regarding the uh, ordinance that's under E for 901 Cleveland Street. Uh, I'm with Optic Productions, and we've been here in Lansing for over 21 years. We've been at this location for 16. We purchased the building back in 2003. Um, do you guys have the documents, uh, these pictures in front of you from Google Maps? Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> we do, sir. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so at the committee meeting last week, uh, it was brought to, uh, you know, uh, this, I'm new to this whole process. This is our first uh, example of this. But in the notes, it sounded like there was a mention. Um, well, first of all, what we'd like to accomplish is we, um, you can see at the northern part of the wide shot, um, the one that contains multiple blocks, um, we are located at the work icon, and the parcel in question is located at the bus stop symbol. So uh, are we on the same page here? Yeah. Great, thanks. Um, we, uh, our, our employees, which have been growing, uh, which is great news, um, have been parking along Cleveland Street. Um, and that uh, is causing issues because sometimes on garbage collection day and whatnot, they're uh, in the way of, of what needs to be done. Um, so we're trying to park behind there. You can see in the close-up shot, you can see two white vehicles, one of our trucks and a passenger vehicle parked behind there. Um, we are stacking vehicles behind there. Um, they're having to back into Oakland, which is a four-lane road. Uh, there's a hill, and vehicles sometimes are going above the speed limit, and it creates some safety issues. We'd like to pave that area and back, and we've merged with the lot next door and so we'd like to create some parking there. Um, just pave it. Um, and I, um, in the notes of the committee last week, um, it, it seemed uh, that we overheard something like it's a residential area. Um, and uh, I'd just like to point out that it is across the street from two multiple blocks of a huge industrial complex and another parking lot that, that I don't know how many, what, maybe 80 vehicles could be parked there. Um, but uh, we do, I, I'm, I, I live in the neighborhood in addition to having my business there. Um, I'm with friends of Orman Park and Bancroft Park. Uh, we want to, uh, there's, a, there's a tree right there next to the street. We want to maintain the tree, plant some shrubbery, and make this as, as uh, conducive to beautifying the neighborhood as we can. Um, and whatever we can do to, you know, make this a good project and beneficial for everybody. We're happy to do. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have Terry Terry. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, I've been immersing myself in the Red Cedar project and the uh, minutia of it uh, to better understand what it offers. and. It is pretty complex, and I applaud <clears throat> Council's thoroughness and thoughtfulness in the questions that you're asking. appreciate that. Uh, I believe we're at a turning point in Lansing, just as we were many years ago in Old Town, when Ferguson Development renovated the Estes Warehouse, built the underground uh, condos, and provided the confidence and impetus that catalyzed a lot more development and investment in Old Town. It was really at a critical time. The activation of the Michigan Avenue corridor will be a game changer, as many of you have said. I think we all kind of feel that. Its impact, I think, will go well beyond the economic and environmental benefits that the project projects it will bring. Um, I think it's the connecting of people in the community that will be the most significant and the most positive. Uh, the ch change in our community will be enormous. And let's think about that for a moment. Um, the more we connect, the better off we are. So I encourage council to move the Red Cedar project forward and lead the transformation of Lansing. We're ready. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that was our final speaker. So we are to the referral of the public hearings. Uh, number, number one, uh, 
payment in lieu of taxes for 517 North Walnut? Um, we're going to be voting on that, so that will be placed on file. Uh, number two, payment in lieu of taxes for 517 West Saginaw Apartments. We will also be voting on that, and that will be placed on file. Number three, SLU 2 2018. Uh, that will go back to development and planning. Number four, Z9 2018. That will also go back to development and planning. And number five, Brownfield Plan number 72. And that goes back to development and planning. Okay, then we are to council consideration of legislative matters and the consent agenda. Vice President uh, Spadafore. I forgot to check with everybody, but I'm going to uh, pull everything on the consent agenda. Does anyone object? Then um, we are Vice President Spadafore, you're more than welcome to take three tribute since we will be handing those out at events and do those under the consent agenda if you'd like. We'll pull everything but the three tributes. Okay. You want to read those tributes? Yes, there is a one in recognition of the Cesar A. Chavez Annual Dinner Dance Scholarship, a tribute in recognition of Cesar E. Chavez Memorial Observance, and a tribute in recognition of the Honorable Tony Benavides for years of service and dedication to the city of Lansing. All right. With I move that, the are consent agenda. With that, are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Then we are to resolutions for action by Vice President Spadafore. Vice President Spadafore. Yes, I would move the resolution setting a public hearing in consideration of the special assessment for the Glen Burns Common Trash and Grass Abatement. Um, this is being proposed, we, we dealt with this last time we met, but um, there was an error in the letter that went out to the residents, and I won't blame anybody particularly, um, but there was an error in that letter and it misidentified the date of the hearing. So we have to repost the hearing so that folks have the opportunity to actually speak to us. So sure. the new date of that hearing is Monday, April 8th at 7 p.m. Just a reminder, all of the occupied parcels in that, um, in the Glenburn area, will be charged $65.72. This is lower than it was last year because the there are more occupied parcels, which is good news, but there's also a little less trash. So, great. Thank you. All right, we have a motion. Pardon? We have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We are um, to Mr. the Sorry. Committee on Development and Planning. Mr. Hussein. Okay. Sure. So A, B, and C, uh, these, and, and obviously we'll take these up respectively, but each of these should sound familiar as uh, both the uh, planning board and the uh, city council approved last year of an MDNR uh, trust fund uh, grant application, essentially um, acquisition grant application, I should say, that dealt with these uh, three properties. Um, let's take up item A first. This is Act 6, 2019. That deals with a, a wise road parcel acquisition um, to be added to uh, Davis Park. Um, this pertains to a 26,000 square foot uh, parcel of land. It's vacant, uh, it's undeveloped, uh, and it is immediately north of Benjamin Davis Park on Wise Road. The current owners uh, were willing to sell. It was the opinion of parks as well as the planning board uh, that this would essentially preserve the open space character uh, of that park. Uh, creates kind of a nice buffer between the park and the residential use north of uh, the park. Uh, the purchase price is $27,400. Uh, the MDR, MDNR sorry, um, grant is a 75% match, which means that the city would be on the hook for $6,900. Uh, so the act uh, would essentially approve the purchase and then would authorize the mayor um, to uh, do what he needs to do to close on the property. So with that being said, I would move Act 6, 2019 uh, for approval. We have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. Councilmember Hussein. Uh, this is Act 7, 2019. This is a Willard Avenue parcel uh, acquisition uh, to be added to Scott Woods. Um, this deals with a roughly, I think it's three and a half acre uh, plot of land. It's adjacent to Scott Woods, uh, adjacent to Mount Hope Cemetery uh, and the River Trail. Uh, the current owners, again, were willing to sell, um, and for the same reasons uh, as uh, the Wise Road parcel, the planning board and parks um, saw fit uh, to essentially uh, pull the trigger on this one. Uh, purchase price is $23,100. The MDNR grant, again, is a 75% match, which means the city is responsible, responsible sorry, for about $5,800 uh, of that uh, purchase price. 
Uh, so with that being said, I would move Act 7, 2019. I have a motion before us. Um, yes, Councilmember Member Spada for. Uh, Council Member Hussein, can you clarify the source of those funds? Is that the, uh, the land acquisition fund? Yes. And that's funded through the South Lawn Towers? It, well, it's an MDNR grant. The city match, I'm sorry. Oh, the city match. We have uh, the Parks and Rec director here, uh, so if he wants to come down and, and clarify where the city match actually comes from, that'd be fantastic. Good question. Brent, I saw you enjoying yourself. I didn't want you to just sit back there. Green light, thank you. So the city match would come from our land acquisition fund and our land acquisition fund, um, one of the revenues that go into that is from cell towers. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Yes. Oh, that was well done, Brett. Um, Act 8, 2019, this de deals with a Hunter's Ridge parcel, parcel sorry, uh, and this would be an acquisition to be added to uh, Hunter's Ridge Park. Uh, this is an interesting property. We have, uh, if, if a, a, we actually pull the trigger on this, we would have 100 acres of contiguous park land uh, along the Grand River, which is fantastic. So you have Fine, you have Fulton, you have Hunter, uh, Hunter's Ridge and beyond. Um, this property uh, is a residential property. There was actually uh, an Airbnb situated on this site. It burned down, uh, is my understanding. Yeah. Uh, the yes. structure was demoed, um, and I mean, and there was a lot of a lot of concern with regards to uh, the Hunter's Ridge neighborhood and, and things of that nature. But um, we have uh, actually we have a, a owner willing to sell. Uh, the purchase price is $110,000. Again, uh, with a 75% match, that means that the city would be on the hook for $27,500. I did reach out to uh, several residents in the Hunters Ridge neighborhood. Um, they were thrilled uh, to hear that this was actually uh, occurring, uh, and so they were fully supportive of that. Uh, with that being said, I would move Act 8, 2019 uh, for the Hunters Ridge acquisition. Okay, we have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Okay, we are Thank to you, the Brad. Committee on General Services. Council Member Walker. Um, thank you, Madam President. We have before us a resolution to approve the licensing for Melrose Pyrotechnics for public display of fireworks in the city of Lansing. This is at the Lugnut um, Stadium. We have several dates here. Um, this is the same group that we've worked with for many years. We've never had a problem with them. There, are se there will be 17 showing, 16 for the lug nuts, one for the soccer team. It's, the programs will go down from about six minutes to five, so they'll be one minute shorter except for uh, July 4th. Um, we need to vote on this tonight because their first display is scheduled for April 6th. So with that, I would move the resolution. I have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Madam President. Yes. Do we have to take a vote for immediate effect? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We are to the Committee on Public Safety. All right, uh, Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, this is for um, resolution for Make Safe and Demolish for um, 3815 Marion. Um, we've worked with this, uh, um, we had a public hearing and then it went back to public safety. Um, the, there, was a, there was someone there um, to make public comment. Um, there has been some things done, um, but according to our code enforcement, there are still a, a number of issues that needed to be done on this site. However, um, because there was someone who had showed up and that there was some um, progress made, um, the Public Safety Commission uh, Committee, excuse me, wrote them a letter basically saying, um, based on the details, they determined that the property is still gonna be set for make safe or demolish, and that, that gives them 60 days after the order is done. Um, but if during that time um, they um, make safe to the re make safe the residents, um, then the um, facility, the home will not be um, 
demolished. If you can see up here, um, it's a pretty significant hoarding situation. They've got some pretty um, intensive uh, plumbing and electrical issues. Um, they are still living in the property, although I think the homeowner um, is not there right now. She's suffering from some health issues, but um, they came to the public hearing. They also came to the meeting of public safety and have committed to doing the steps that are needed to make the home safe. So um, pending, um, we are gonna continue and, and I am putting, um, I'm making the motion to uh, approve the order to make safe or demolish, but with the understanding that um, they are still doing repairs, and if they do the repairs before that time, then um, the home will not be demolished. So with that, I move the resolution. Uh, we have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Councilmember Hussein. I just, I just want to clarify that whenever we're, you know, this body considers a 60 day make safe or demolish, um, that the property owner always has that 60 day right. period, always. Right. Uh, so there, there was no special uh, consideration given in this situation. I, and I appreciate you clarifying that. I think what I meant to try to um, get across was that unlike um, the other two that I'm going to talk about, they did show up and that they did. Um, appear to want to make the repairs. I'm not quite sure they're able to, but they appear to want to. And so I think because it is their home, um, you know, we did, you know, follow up and say with the letter saying, you know, we heard you, you know, you need to get these repairs done. You need to pull the appropriate permits and, and move forward. So um, I appreciate that. So the motion still stands. And um, just some clarification on the letter. Because the owner was not there, she had her husband was there, but he was not on the um, deed. It was um, a mother and a daughter that were on the deed. So we wanted to make it abundantly clear to um, the owner where we were, what the processes were. And if you remember during the um, public um, comment section um, when the public hearing that we had on this they indicated that they felt they were going to be able to receive funds from a church and would be able to get this completed in 45 days I'm not sure that that's going to happen but we wanted them to understand what what our process was so with that we have a motion um, are there any other questions seeing none all those in favor say aye aye Opposed. Passes unanimously. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. The next one on is um, for 4704 Hughes Road. Um, there was a hearing held on uh, October 25th, 2018, um, which um, the hearing officer determined that the building was unsafe and dangerous. There's water um, in the basement. Um, there was extensive water damage. Um, the owners did not show up there. Um, and also, during our public safety meeting, um, the owners did not show up, no, neither did they show up at the public hearing. And so, um, with that, I move to um, move the resolution to continue the make safer dem demolish process. All right, we have the motion um, in front of us. Any other questions or concerns? We did have. Um, a um, constituent who was a neighbor that came down during the public hearing and um, yes. requested that we continue to move through the process and then did uh, follow up with um, an email um, that they wanted the committee to know that they wanted the process to continue. So with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. The final one is at 434 Francis. This is just a garage, but it is not safe. It's got some foundation issues. Um, the garage is a stone garage, and there's um, some cracks in it. Um, and so, um, as I should have said, but the other ones, the SEV on this garage is $10,350, but it is estimated it's going to cost $22,176 to repair. Um, and with that, again, um, there was no comment. The owner did not show up for public comment for the hearing on March 11th, and they have not showed up at public safety. Um, 
And before I move the resolution, just stepping back, because um, that was one of the questions I asked. So, you know, when we do this, and the cost of the demolition does go back to the property owner, it goes on their property taxes. So the city of Lansing is not incurring the cost to, to demolish these buildings. So I think that's, that's important to, to note. Um, and with that, I would move the resolution um, for Make Safe Demolish for 434 Francis. I have a motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Okay, we are to the Committee on Ways and Means. Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the first one before us is a land acquisition grant application authorizing um, Michigan National Resources Trust Fund grant funding to acquire a parcel on 1624 um, Cavanaugh Street. Uh, let me, okay. Um, this one uh, is kind of, um, I think, a little um, off the beaten path. The trust fund actually um, contacted the city of Lansing about this piece of property. It's across from the river trail in Hawk Island, um, and it's in a floodplain. Um, there are two buildings on the property right now and um, that you either have to use or demolish. And it's my understanding that we're going to demolish those two buildings. Um, the, um, the grant amount to the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund is $100,000, but our city match is $25,000. Uh, the matching dollars for this will come from either the Land Acquisition Fund, which um, Mr. Krasinski has already said, um, uh, is partially funded with cell tower royalties or from our capital improvement fund. And with that, I move the resolution. We have a motion on this. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, this is also a land acquisition grant application authorizing the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant funding to acquire property on 342 East St. Joseph. Um, it's um, also vacant property on the corner of River and St. Joe. It's in a floodplain. Um, you know, there, there is um, a building on site and again, the requirements you either um, demolish the property or you um, use it for recreational purposes. It's my understanding that um, this property, um, this, this uh, structure will be demolished. Um, it's also my understanding that it could be used, it could either be left vacant or used for additional parking for the Cherry Hill boat launch. Um, let's see, um, it looks like it's also maybe used um, for our emergency management, looking to acquire it um, for flood management, it's also in a floodplain, and so the funding amount is um, $100,000. The city match is $25,000. Again, um, those matching dollars coming from our land acquisition fund or our capital improvement fund. And with that, um, Madam President, I move the resolution. I have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, the one question I would uh, would ask uh, Council Member Spitzley, um, the cost to demolish is not figured into this, it's just the cost of acquisition. Um, I, I thought it was, because um, we asked that same question. And I think the cost of demolition, but here comes our, our Parks and Recreation Director to, to clue us in, but I, I thought it was included in as part of that. So we double checked this with the DNR and uh, those would not be allowable as part of acquisition. So we would need to take care of the demolishing with these. Um, that is something I'm going to be talking with emergency management about um, to see if because of the floodplain, if there's other funding for that, but the city would be responsible for the demo of this. Then I guess I would, I would then, since, we, since you're telling us that I would, I'd like to know approximately how much it's gonna cost to demolish the, the, the buildings, but I mean, that's just something I just. Yeah, I mean, for the, it, for the red cedar buildings there, um, you know, the other, just to give you an example, the old red cedar score or uh, starter house there was about $15,000. Um, this may be a little bit more in terms of square footage on that. Um, the only problem, I guess, in terms of um, 
passage or vote on this is we need to have these in by the April 1st deadline, so. I, I'm not saying I'm, we're not supporting it. We just wanted to know if there's additional costs, what we can expect. There would. Those additional costs um, that we might be looking at. Okay. With that, are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. The final one is a land acquisition grant application authorizing Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant funding to acquire um, a parcel on 700 River Street. This is um, similar to our previous one. Um, um, it's in a floodplain um, used, you know, used to manage floodwaters, our emergency management department again. Um, let's see. It is for $80,000. Our city match is $20,000. And um, one of the questions that was asked, though, um, was whether or not um, whether or not you go by how do you how do you determine the cost? So whether or not you go by an appraised value, or we wanted to make sure that you know because they knew it was we were interested in the property, they didn't you know um, we didn't pay more than the appraised value and. The Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund grant requirements, um, it requires, you know, an appraised value must be paid. So assessed value, I'm sorry, assessed value must be um, paid. And so there's, we, we pay the assessed value of the property. Um, again, it was a fund amount of $80,000 um, with the city match of $20,000. And with that, I move the resolution. Sorry. Uh Council members, Vice President Spadafore. I just want to apologize. I was wrong. Brent's telling, Brent's telling us it's the appraised it's value. Appra yeah, okay. you're, you're right. I I'm sorry about that. That's what I had in my notes. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions or concerns? Um, Brett, the only thing I'd ask, and these, the, this one as well as the other one in Cherry Hill, are either of these historic properties? because that is an historic district right, right there. To my knowledge, they are not. One is a house, one is a, a bait shop there, um, and, or in form, both former there, I guess. But, um, you know, we can double check on that with- I, I would definitely double check. With Bill and the, but this kind of went through planning. I know Bill is on the historic yeah. uh, commission, so I can double check though. If you double check on that. Okay, with that, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Passes unanimously. Okay, we are to the Committee of the Whole. Vice President Spadafore. Sorry. Madam President, um, first thing on Committee of the Whole, we discuss at length the Seventh Amendment to the Amended and Restated Real Estate Purchase and Development Agreement. Um, I would move to set the public hearing for the Red Cedar Development Agreement that will be on April 8th at 7 p.m. As was discussed here this evening, Council had several um, considerations that were we've asked the City Attorney and the developers to go back and take a look at, um, and the um, City Attorney advises they're not substantive enough to require a reset of the 30-day clock, so we can go ahead with the public hearing on the 8th. All right, I have a motion before us. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Vice President Spadafore. Um, this resolution is an amendment to the resolution 2019-031 that we used to um, convey the land at Grove Spec so that we can change some of our fee structures there given some deed restrictions that were put in place by the state. When we got the final copy back from the state, it turned out our legal description did not match the public acts legal description, so we're amending our resolution to comply with state law. So I move the resolution. Did I get that right, Mr. City Attorney? Yes, Mr. City Attorney. The difference being there are two parcels and the state had it registered as two parcels. When it got to the city, the city combined the parcels into one description. Okay. So the Attorney General wants the same two descriptions. And so this will be a conveyance and then a reconveyance back. So it was accurate, just different interpretation. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye, opposed, same sign. Passes unanimously. Vice President Spadafore. 
The next resolution is the ratification of the collective bargaining agreement with Teamsters 214. Uh, we spoke um, about this earlier this evening. The high points of this agreement, um, as shared by the chief labor negotiator, title, chief labor negotiator, 22 employees are affected by this collective bargaining agreement. Um, the financial aspects include a signing bonus for each of the two years for the employees, as well as a 3% across the board raise in, in both of those years. It is a two-year contract, and one of the other things that was important in this contract is it cleaned up several components of language and changes that have been sort of practiced and codified them. It also includes a further look back on the period of calculation for the final average compensation in retirement benefits. So a win-win for the city and the employees. I All move right. the resolution. We have a motion before us. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we are to ordinances for introduction. Uh, the Committee on Development and Planning introduced an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan, providing for the rezoning of a parcel of real property located in the City of Lansing, Michigan for the revision of the district maps adopted by Section 1246.02 of the Code of Ordinances, the property identified as Z1-2019, the West 5,295 .5 square feet of 901 Cleveland Street from B Residential District to F Commercial District. The ordinance is read the first time by its title and referred to the Committee on Development and Planning. Council member um, Hussein. Yeah, so we heard uh, a bit of an explanation uh, from the applicant earlier. The applicant is Optic uh, Productions LLC. It's a full service production company. Uh, they've been in business for about 20 years and they are growing. In any event, back in 2015, uh, the Ingham County Land Bank actually um, uh, demoed a building, a residential building that was on this site. Um, in 2017, the applicant actually purchased uh, this property and then they combined uh, their property with this parcel. Um, very kind of unique situation. I haven't seen a lot of this in development and planning, but it now has hybrid zoning. What they would like to do is to rezone, um, again, that 5,295 square feet that they purchased back in 2017 from B residential to F commercial district. Uh, as explained to this body uh, earlier tonight, they would like to uh, provide for additional parking for, again, this, this growing company. Um, and not only the, uh, the um, additional employees, but uh, also individuals that they're uh, engaging in business with. Um, in your packet, you will see that the zoning administrator has recommended um, denial of this particular request. Uh, it was uh, the opinion of our zoning administrator that this was, uh, in fact, a spot zone and would uh, result in unintended, I should say disrupted kind of um, land use. Uh, but with that being said, uh, the public hearing would be set for April 22nd. Um, we know, uh, based on everything that we went through last year, regardless of what that, uh, that recommendation is from um, our zoning administrator as well as our um, planning board, that we do have to, in fact, have that public hearing and we will have a subsequent uh, vote. So with that being said, I would move the public hearing for April 22nd. We have a um, motion on a, uh, setting the public hearing. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The Committee on Development and Planning introduced an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan, providing for the rezoning of a parcel of real property located in the City of Lansing, Michigan, and for the revision of the district maps adopted by Section 1246.02 of the Code of Ordinances, the property identified as Z2-2019, 714 North Pine Street from C Residential District to D1 Professional Office District. The ordinance is read a first time by its title and referred to the Committee on Development and Planning. Councilmember Hussein. So the applicant in this uh, case is the Capital Area Housing Partnership. We do have the former Executive Director, Mickey uh, Drosty, with us. Uh, she is consulting with CAP um, now. Uh, and I did, we appreciate you sitting through this very long meeting. So if you want to come on down to the well, um, I did uh, ask her to come down and, and just kind of present um, the reason for the request uh, and, and the need for the request. And, and before we get to that, um, just so that you know, the public hearing again would be, um, let's see, April 22nd. So it would be the same uh, day as Optic uh, LLC's public hearing. Mickey, if you could make sure the green light's on. It's on. Okay, thank you. So the Capital Area Housing Partnership acquired this house, which sits in the parking lot of 516 West Saginaw, Ferris Manor Apartments, which we talked a little bit, or you talked a little bit about earlier this evening. Um, and it was acquired to provide on-site um, community space slash um, supportive service slash management space for those apartments in the, the Walnut Street apartments. Can um, you bring that microphone just a little bit closer to you? Thank you. 
Nobody's ever told me I was too quiet <laughs> before. <laughs> so the house was acquired to um, adjoin the, the property at Ferris Manor and be used as um, office community support service space, which requires rezoning. Okay. Any questions for, um, for her at all? Council member. All right, that was simple enough. So with that being said, uh, I would move the resolution. I have a motion, and this is again to set the public hearing for the 22nd. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose, same sign. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Wood introduced an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend the Lansing codified ordinances by amending Chapter 292, Sections 292.1. 1, 4, sub G and sub H to provide that an employee who between October 30th, 1990 and September 30th, 2003 transferred from a full-time city UAW union position into a full-time city Teamsters 580 union position but was not vested in the employee's retirement system at the time of transfer may use the accrued UAW time for calculation of the employee's Teamster Union Service credit vesting, but not for pension benefit multiplier purpose, and to renumber the existing subsection 292.14G to 292.14H without text change. The ordinance is read a first time by its title and referred to the Committee of the Whole. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I would move the ordinance um, above described by the clerk. Uh, as you'll recall, we've had several um, discussions at this around, around this issue on the table. An employee wishing to retire who um, believes through one way or another that, um, that it was allowed and maybe there was a miscommunication or misunderstanding. But in order to make it happen, we needed an MOU and an ordinance change. And the MOU has been drafted and the ordinance change is being proposed by you. Okay. And this is to set the public hearing for April 8th. Yes. Are there any other questions? Court, court. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> Mr. Okay. Clerk. We are to ordinances for passage. We have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend Chapter 888 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Lansing for the purposes of renaming the project sponsor and providing for an extension of a service, large, service charge in lieu of taxes for existing low-income family units for a project known as 517 North Walnut Apartments pursu pursuant to the provisions of the State Housing Development Authority Act of 1966 as amended. The ordinance is read a second time by its title. It was reported from the Committee on Development and Planning and is on the order of immediate passage. Councilmember Hussein. Sure, so we had obviously an explanation of the request earlier. Uh, we also had a public hearing, so I won't uh, go back into the details other than um, I do want to explain uh, my reason for supporting this. Uh, I have been very consistent in uh, voting no on 4% uh, pilots. Um, and, and there are many reasons. Um, I don't believe the city can su continue to sustain 4% pilots, uh, particularly uh, for very wealthy for-profit applicants. Uh, with that being said, um, th these both of these that you'll see before us, uh, the body tonight, is, to me they are unique uh, in the fact that uh, we have a nonprofit um, that is an incredibly uh, reputable nonprofit. Um, they are simply requesting um, two and four year extensions as opposed to uh, entirely new 30 year uh, payment in lieu of taxes. And then the other piece of uh, my support is that the Capital Area Housing Partnership with both of these projects are working to support truly uh, some of our absolute most vulnerable uh, neighbors. Uh, and so for me, uh, all three of those things really matter. Uh, and are the reason that uh, I will be supporting uh, both of these tonight. So with that being said, um, I would first move the payment in lieu of taxes for Walnut Apartments, 517 uh, North Walnut. Are there any other questions or concerns? Uh, Council Member Washington. Thank you, Madam President. I, I am also going to say this because I want it on the record because I do not support 4% pilots ever. But in this situation, I am going to support it because there has been a change of ownership with both of these properties. These are both small properties. These properties actually house some of our most difficult people to house. They have um, supportive services right there for the individuals and again these 4% pilots are already in place 
and one is just a two-year extension of what's already there, and one is another is just a four-year extension for what are, is already there. And my reasoning, um, for the record, is I don't support 4% pilots um, because we have a we have to raise revenue to run this city, and I and I too don't think that millionaire developers should be profiting off our tax dollars. So I just want that for the record. Are there any other uh, questions or concerns? Um, I want to make sure I on the record as well because I have not supported 4% pilots um, that have come to us in the past. Um, we are talking about 32 units and again it's just adding two and four years um, to an existing um, pilot that is out there and um, uh, these are um, the company that's running them is a reputable company along with the fact that these um, are both in my neighborhood and I know the advantage um, that they are to our community. Um, so um, with that I will be supporting this. This is a roll call vote. Seeing on no other. On adoption of the ordinance, Councilmember Hussein, yes. Councilmember Jackson, yes. Councilmember Spadafore, yes. Councilmember Spitzley, yes. Councilmember Washington, yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six yeas, zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. And um, I would move for immediate effect. And all those in favor of immediate effect say aye. 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 It passes unanimously. Okay, now we have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend Chapter 888 of the Code of Ordinances for the, of the City of Lansing for the purposes of renaming the project sponsor and providing for an extension of a service charge in lieu of taxes for existing low-income family units for a project known as 516 West Saginaw Apartments slash Ferris Manor pursuant to the provisions of the State Housing Development Authority Act of 1966. The ordinance is read a second time by its title. It was reported from the Committee on Development and Planning and is on the order of immediate passage. Councilmember Hussein. I would move the pilot for Ferris Manor Apartments. All right, we have a motion on the uh, floor seeing uh, no questions um, at this time. Uh, we have a roll call vote. On adoption of the ordinance, Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Councilmember Washington? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Six yeas, zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. Councilmember Hussein? I move for immediate effect. We have uh, a motion for immediate effect. All those, in or all those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. We. One more ordinance. Yes. Okay. We have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan to amend Chapter 1460, Sections 1460.01 and 1460.02 of the Lansing Codified Ordinances to adopt the 2015 International Property Maintenance Code with certain additions, deletions, and alterations. The ordinance is read a second time by its title. It was reported from the Committee on Public Safety and is on the order of immediate passage. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, this, this started last year. Um, and so it's come over here. We've met with code enforcement. Scott Sanford's been um, at the committee meetings. Um, and so um, we've had uh, public comment on it. We have had, uh, we've reviewed it quite extensively. Um, and with that, I'm going to move for the adoption of the ordinance. We have a motion on the ordinance. Is there any questions or concerns? Again, this is updating the international yep. property code that we are currently under to 2015. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, ready? On adoption of the ordinance, Councilmember Hussein? Yes. Councilmember Jackson? Yes. Councilmember Spadafore? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Yes. Councilmember Washington? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Six yeas, zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. Councilmember Spitzley? Move for immediate effect. We have a motion for immediate effect. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We are to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. That's the yellow sheet in the back. If you wish to address city council on any city government related matter, you'll have three minutes, but you are required to sign in in the next few seconds. Uh, and we are to 
reports of city officers, boards, and commissions. Vice President Spadafore. Madam President, I move that all items be considered as being read in full and the proper referrals be made by you. Uh, with that, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. We have uh, reports from city officers, letters from the city clerk regarding minutes of boards, commissions, and authorities placed on file in the clerk's office. Placed on file. Uh, Nonprofit recognition for the Michigan League, League of Bicyclists. General services. Uh, determinations of the elected officers compensation commission regarding the council president. Uh, committee of whole. Determinations of the elected officers compensation commission regarding the council vice president. Committee of whole. Determinations of the elected officers compensation commission regarding council members. Committee of whole. Determinations of the elected officers compensation commission regarding the city clerk. Committee of whole. Determinations of the elected officers compensation commission regarding the mayor. Committee of whole. We have letters from the mayor regarding the decertification of parts of Wilson Street, Linwood Street, Fernwood Avenue, South Gate Avenue, Pattengill Avenue, and White Street. Uh, Public Service Committee. Act 10, 2019, Simkin Triangle Acquisition. Development and Planning. A supplemental appropriation for the real estate revenue from Waverly Park, Miller Road Center, and Cooley Hayes House. Committee of the Whole. Funding application, Michigan Department of Transportation Local Bridge Program. Ways and means. Outside legal counsel, re a revised list for the City of Lansing and Board of Water and Light. Committee of Whole. Grossbeck Golf Course revised resolution uh, to update the legal description. Committee of Whole and placed on file. The appointment of Emily Jefferson as an at-large member of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Development and planning. Collective bargaining agreement, uh, ratification of the Teamsters. Uh, Committee of Whole and placed on file. Uh, community Development Block Grant Action Plan. Uh, Committee of the Whole. We are to... Oops. We also oh. have um, a letter from um, the Lansing Regional Chamber um, supporting um, the Brownfield um, uh, Development uh, Project. And if we can... We'll make that part of the public hearing. If you it. would yes. make that part of the public hearing. And then we also have the mayor's budget that was um, presented to us this evening, which will be going to committee of a whole. Okay. Uh, motion of excused absence. I have a motion for excused absence. Vice President Spadafore. I move that all members absent be excused. Um, we have a motion for excused absence for Councilmember Dunbar and Garza. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose. Passes unanimously. We are to remarks by council members. Are there any other remarks by council members? Seeing none. Uh, any other remarks from the mayor? Seeing none. Okay, public comment. Our speaker is Aaron Fox, followed by Morgan Butts. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor Shore, Madam President. Honorable council members and city staff, Aaron Fox, third ward. And thank you for your kind service to the city and for the opportunity to address you this evening. I'm here to speak uh, to an incident involving Julianne Miller and Martin Michon and to address homelessness policy in the city of Lansing. Uh, Julie and Martin own a local chapter of a nationwide organization called Punks with Lunch. And this organization assists homeless populations in our city, volunteering their time and organizing and gathering resources in order to aid vulnerable populations. And during the recent extreme weather event, the pair were uh, at the CATA Transportation Center to offer aid to homeless who congregate there seeking relief from cold temperatures. Um, uh, Julia and Martin were paying customers who had purchased bus tokens to pass out to those in need at the CATA Transportation Center. There was a concern about their activity, and CATA dispatched LPD uh, to uh, arrest the pair. My understanding was there was a dispute between CATA and LPD uh, uh, with Miller and Michonne regarding their activity, which resulted in, in, in CATA uh, pressing trespass charges. Uh, firstly, I have a strong concern about the amount of force the LPD used in this matter. Uh, if you review the Lansing State Journal article by Judy Putnam, you see the CATA surveillance video where the officers literally slam uh, Julia and Martin up against the plate glass windows in order to arrest them for trespassing. 
Uh, I think that's a serious amount of force. I think de-escalation in this in instance would have been more appropriate, especially considering the purpose that the pair was there to fulfill. So I call for the city to request that CATA drop these charges against Julia and Martin. <clears throat> Homelessness in Lansing has developed into a major problem. Uh, I have to explain to, uh, to my 10-year-old child while I'm driving her to school in the morning, she goes to Sheridan Road, and I live on the south, uh, the south end here, um, but I have to explain to her why people are standing along Larch Street with signs at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, asking for help. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting that, you know, the, the, my child understands that this is a serious issue and that these people should be helped, yet this continues on and, and folks aren't placed uh, in homes and given the help they need. So I call for a review and update of the existing policy to ensure that we have 24-7 warming centers with free shuttles during extreme cold weather events. And for the city to work with Mishta and Nahara, as well as LPD, CATA, DHHS, and other agencies and organizations to get more chronically homeless off of our streets. I believe that the city should request CATA drop those charges, and I believe that uh, the council should send the matter of homeless policy to committee for recommendations to the council concerning revisions to the existing policy. And thank you for allowing me to speak today. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Morgan Butts and then Loretta Stanaway. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Um, I'm Morgan Butts. I'm the Director of Communications at the MSU Bird Art Museum, and I'm here representing the Arts Council of Greater Lansing for Arts Advocacy Month. The arts have always had a significant place in my life. I was raised by a family that not only supported the arts, but was really fully immersed in them. For my third birthday, my mom actually threw me an art gallery theme birthday party where she made a cake that looked like a watercolor palette, um, and then she hung my works all over the house. So growing up, it really was an enormous, enormous privilege to be able to travel to many art museums at a young age and to have parents that really emphasize that everything from Greek, Greek sculptures to Chilean quilts to the animated Disney films that we collected on VHS, they were all art. Art has a powerful and significant impact on us as learners and as people in ways that often go undervalued despite evidence of its importance. The arts teach us to think critically, describe our world visually, solve problems creatively, and connect to others with empathy. Arts bring us joy, help us express our values, and build bridges between cultures. They are also a fundamental component of healthy communities, strengthening them socially, educationally, and economically. Benefits that persist even in difficult social and economic times. I'm currently a resident of Lansing, and I was actually born right at Sparrow Hospital. Um, my parents are from here, they got married here, my grandparents still live here. So I've had an investment in this city for my entire life in some capacity, and my family has for generations. I care a lot about this community, and I couldn't be more proud of where we are right now. There's no doubt in my mind that our city recognizes the importance of arts. You know that we are an incredible, diverse community, and the arts in our city should be a celebration of that. And ultimately, we can rally around the way that arts help us build a collective Lansing identity through creative placemaking initiatives. From an economic standpoint, purchases made by the Greater Lansing Arts and Cultural Sector, together with its attendees, also provide the region with $58 million of economic impact, and 3.1 million in state tax revenue annually. The major festivals in Lansing and East Lansing alone draw 450,000 people each year, providing 13.5 million in regional economic impact, nearly 80 million jobs, or nearly 80 jobs and 400 direct, uh, indirect jobs. So I really want to thank you on behalf of the Greater Lansing Arts Council for the uh, support that you provide for the arts, and I just ask that you continue to keep arts and culture at the forefront of your minds as you plan for our city's future. And on behalf of hundreds of artists and creatives within our city, um, we are behind you supporting you when you do so. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Loretta Sanaway and then Donald Horton. Okay, and Donald Horton, I think he left, he left right? Yeah. Okay, um, Jillian Dawson and Steve Monte, are you passing? Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Um, so I'm here tonight to comment on the determinations made by the elected uh, officers' compensation commission. 
Um, they were tonight referred to the Committee of the Whole, um, but I would just like to speak on them. Um, I think we uh, provided the numbers at a previous meeting. We had two gentlemen come in from the committee to talk to you guys about what that's going to look like. Um, and I think they did a great job. Um, so I'm not going to keep talking about that. But I would like to say um, that first I'm in support of the determination. I'm obviously I'm on the committee. Um, so I think, you know, we're members of the community and we did our research looking into the numbers from neighboring communities and um, not just neighboring communities, but communities that are the same size and have the same kind of metropolitan feel as Lansing. Um, and, you know, we're we're OK right now. It seems like we're we're competitive and in in kind of we could be definitely better. Um, and I think that's reflected in our determination. The key thing that I want to touch on is that if we don't make an action, um, we will be kind of falling back in the future. Um, we want to stay competitive. Um, when I got appointed to this committee, um, I'm not sure which one of you asked me, but one of you guys asked me why I wanted to be on it. And it was so, I, I told you so that I could help keep Lansing good for us and competitive and attract the best quality candidates to, to these roles that we can attract. And I just think that by continuing this inaction, um, which it's been like a state of inaction since 2015, um, we're really going to have trouble attracting those people in the future. Um, I heard when the, the two guys from the committee came last time to talk to you, there was a lot of voicing concerns about being able to raise um, the salaries, but it's not really a raise if you consider that's adjusting for inflation. Um, I think there there may have been a raise considered or added, but really what I've, I'm focusing on is the adjustments for inflation. If those aren't happening, then we're going to be way behind in the future. Because um, I mean, if we're looking at even Metro Detroit areas, uh, the the city man because they have more of like a city manager um, heavy model where we have our mayor. Um, so, you know, they're already making more than what our mayor is making. And, um, you know, they're attract They're going to be able to attract those candidates, especially if they are adjusting for inflation. So um, I think it's just something we need to consider and try not to uh, make decisions about. If you've already made them, maybe think about that more. Um, but, yeah, thank you, guys. Sorry, thank I'm rambling. You. <laughs> thank you. And... Uh, Next is Steve Monty and then Harold Lehman Jr. Hello, Mayor, Council. Uh, thanks for hearing me tonight. Uh, I'd like to echo the sentiment that Ms. Dawson said about that. Um, I know, especially coming up uh, in elections, nobody wants to have it said that they voted themselves a raise. It's an easy way to spin this, but uh, I'd like you to consider that it's not yourselves that you're voting for a raise, it's the office that you currently hold and it's who we may attract in the future that will come after you. And so please, um, I would hope that you leave absent from your consideration your personal ramifications uh, on an election, uh, and, and don't let that influence the decision on whether or not to uh, adjust the, the salaries that you guys receive, because you guys do do a good job, um, and I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, you put in a lot of work, and I may seem like I disagree with you constantly, but that's just when I come talk. Um, also, I, I'm really happy and pleased to see that you are expanding parkland. Uh, that's very important on me. Um, but so that was the nice part. Now for the bad part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of people, I'm sure everyone up on the dais has had rough times in their life. Um, for whatever reasons, life can come at you. And I heard earlier tonight talking about a woman who sounds like she can't afford to fix her house and she's having health problems, and God knows what else. And what I see is tough. We're going to bulldoze your house and hit you with the bill. And then in the same conversation, I hear developers that say, we need some more money so we can make more money. And you know, they're welcomed with open arms while the, the people that live in the city get thrown under the bus. Uh, a business person who's been here for 20 years, I drive past Optic on a daily basis. Uh, they've improved their building, they've ins installed new signs, and the phrasing when talking about them is it's a disruption for them to have a parking lot. But, uh, when they're really just trying to 
provide for their employees and improve the neighborhood that he lives in himself. And so that was framed in a really um, biased way, in my opinion. And the, in the same breath, the next person to come up gets to give a presentation as opposed to just public comment. And I, I felt like that was not even dispensing. Um, and I'd like to see more consideration given to the gentleman uh, from Optic. And um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, finally tonight, we have Harold Lehman, Jr. Uh, thank you very much. And hopefully, these uh, folks that are representing the Compensation Commission will somewhat let you have some breathing room and enjoy, look at the material and do what you got to do. I appreciate their service, but follow the process and don't make anything bigger than it really is. Harold Lehman, former council member for 12 years on the city council, eight year member on the Geyer Advisory Board. In the last uh, two years have been hell for me and I don't appreciate it. I put a claim into this city <clears throat> and it was rejected by uh, well, not, maybe not directly by you folks. We went, it, took it, uh, sent it back to the city attorney's office. After I followed the process and was in front of him in December of 18. I follow the process. I've always thought this is a mountain out of a molehill and no one wants to step in and say, this is all BS. It's all right, people won't talk to me, people avoid me. Let me just say this. I put a claim in <clears throat> City of Lansing Parks Department and the Geyer Advisory Board did not follow the Open Meetings Act and proper notice to all members. There were six of us. One of them was Mr. Lehman for their July 16, 2016 special meeting. The Open Meetings Act wasn't followed, the Parks Department didn't follow it, and the Geyer Advisory Board didn't. Number two, City Attorney's Office. And there's been some, a lot of turnover in that department over the past several years. The City Attorney's Office did not follow past practice of sending a letter to a person like Harold Lehman regarding the guy in looking at the Geyer Advisory Board minutes over a, a 10 year period. That's what the city attorney's office was used for if there was an issue. Not to have certain people act like they're the city attorney. Number three, the city of Lansing Parks employee, your second in command, did not return a check of $200 to Mr. Lehman. It's right here, folks, a copy of it. I can't believe that you are going to accept the fact that somebody doesn't return a check or, or allow this to happen. Oh, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna cash it. Number four, city attorney's office did not follow up in a pro-action matter in regard to getting the Geyer Advisory Board minutes Thank from you. 2008 to 2016. If you would just look, you would see a history Thank when you. issues came to a head. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, I know you're new to this position, and there are new members that weren't around over the time of 2016 and before that. But um, I just feel that uh, you, no one has ever reached out, no one, to say this is a mountain out of a molehill and you're doing the wrong thing to Mr. Lehman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, that was our final speaker. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>